Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to look at creating and coloring light bursts in Photoshop. Before we get going with this video tutorial, I just want to show you what's possible with the technique that we're going to look at here. This is the basic sunburst that we can create, but there are also a lot of other effects. So this is one of them. And I'm just going to run up the line here. These are all created with the same basic technique. This one has a gradient map over the top of it. And then I started playing around with various filters. So I'm going to show you some of those. And here's a twist effect and a ripple effect. And then I started working with some glowing edge effects as well. So all of these are created using the same basic technique. And then we'll just add some additional bits and pieces to it to give us a sunburst or a light burst that has different appearances and different attributes to it. I'm just going to tuck this illustration away for now. And let's go and create a brand new document with just File New. I'm just going to create a square document. So I'm going to make mine about 1500 pixels by 1500 pixels in size. And just click OK. Now I'm going to also get rid of layer comps. And let's go and get our layers palette by choosing Window and then Layers. I have black as my foreground color. I'm going to fill this layer with black. So I'm going to press Alt and Backspace, Option, Delete on the Mac. But at any stage, if you wanted to fill with the foreground color, you could also just click on the Paint Bucket tool and just tip the foreground paint color into that layer. Let's click here to create a brand new layer. And the effect that I'm going to show you is done or is created using a gradient. So let's go and get the gradient tool. And in the gradients, what we want is the black to white gradient. So this is foreground to background, and this is black to white. So either of them would be the same because we've got black and white selected as our colors here. So I'm just going to click on the gradient. I want this to be a linear gradient. I'm on a brand new empty layer, and I'm just going to drag to fill this layer with the gradient. I'm going to hold Shift as I do that so that the gradient goes in a straight line. Here we are, white at the top and black at the bottom. Now this is a gradient fill, but it's not going to be perfect for my purposes. So I'm going to do it again. And I'm going to stop this time a little bit short of the bottom because I want the bottom to be pure black. This is a better gradient for this effect. Now I'm going to choose Filter and then Distort and then Wave. And the first effect we're going to do is to create that sunburst, the very, very hard sunburst. So what I'm looking for here is a set of stripes. I'm going to click Sign as the type. And I'm going to adjust these sliders until I get what I'm looking for. And what I want, as I said, is just a set of stripes here. So I've got thick stripes happening here. So I'm just going to start to vary the wavelength and see how that affects it. Well, if I create a smaller wavelength, I'm going to get more of these stripes. But I do want my minimum and my maximum to be practically the same. So if my minimum is 39, I'm going to set my maximum to 40. And the amplitude, well, I'm just setting that so that I'm getting stripes. And I'm going to leave my scale at 100%. So I'll just click OK. And now I have a set of stripes. And to make this into that sunburst, I'm going to choose Filter, Distort, Polar Coordinates. Now there are only two settings for polar coordinates. And one is rectangular to polar, and the other is polar to rectangular. And in short, one works and one doesn't. So just click on either of these until you get the one that looks like what it is that you're trying to achieve, and click OK. And there we have the first of our sunbursts. Now I'm going to turn this off and let's go and create a brand new layer and let's see how we would create some of the ones that look a little bit more like light. Now these are all going to be done using the exact same technique. So again, I'm going to my gradient. And again, I'm going to drop my gradient from the top nearly all the way down. Hold the Shift key to make sure it's straight. Then I'm going to choose Filter and then Distort and then Wave. But this time, I'm not looking for these stripes. I'm looking for something that is a little bit more organic. So I'm going to adjust Wavelength so that it's different, so that the minimum and maximum are very different. You can see that we're starting to get these streaks of light. 
but what's worrying me is that these white bars where they reach the very bottom are going to run into the edges of the image. So I want to start changing things here so that I get more black along the bottom here. And so I'm just experimenting with things that will make the bottom of that box here a little bit more black. But I do want some interesting things here, so I'm just going to experiment a bit with wavelength and see how that is going to change what I'm seeing here. Now this is looking pretty good to me. I think I'm going to get quite an interesting effect here. Black towards the bottom, but some interesting variation here. So I'll click OK. And again, let's go and create our rotation. So again, filter, distort, polar coordinates. And click OK. And this is the effect that we've got here. Now if you're concerned about the white running into the edges, you can make an adjustment to this. I'm going to add a new layer on top of this and I'm going to Alt Backspace Option Delete to fill it with black. So if I now change the blend mode on this layer, let's see what happens. So I'm just going to click Dissolve and I'm going to run down the list by pressing the down arrow key on the PC. On the Mac you'll use Shift Plus or Shift Minus. Well you can see Color Burn has had the effect of just highlighting the shape in here but not the bit that is running into the edges. It's not exactly what we want but it's on the way. So let's go and see if anything else will give us an effect that we're looking for. Many of these are doing nothing at all. Lighten is not helping us, neither is Screen or Color Dodge or Lighter Color. None of these are doing what we want. But Overlay is. Overlay has masked out the very lightest areas so that this shape looks as if it's all inside our document and not running into the walls of it, if you like. Let's see if there's something else. Soft light is a little bit better. Hard light and vivid light, linear light and pin light are doing nothing. Now I've got to the end of the list, so I'm thinking that I'm going to get the most mileage probably in overlay or soft light. So I may want to choose one or other of these. Let's turn these off and let's go again, create a new layer and let's add another effect. Again, still with my gradient. I'm going to apply the Wave Filter to this. Now at this point I could experiment too with triangle or square. Either of those might give me interesting results. But you really will have to work at these wavelength and number of generators and amplitude to see what it is that you can get because there's quite a bit of variation with even quite small adjustments to these sliders. Experiment with a variety of effects where you have these minimum and maximums very close to each other or quite wide apart. So here I've achieved a fairly stylized look using triangle. I've set my number of generators. Here it's set to 28. Let's just put it back in that sort of region. 28, 40, something like that, quite a small value. My wavelengths are minimum 101, maximum 106, amplitude 20 and 56, and my scale is 100%, and I'm using triangle. Right now the number of generators is set to 36, so I'm just going to press OK. Now let's rotate this using our polar coordinates. Now you can see with the result of this particular rotation, I've got a very obvious edge. Now everything's not lost if this happens to you, because let's have a look and see what we can do with this. I'm going to right click this layer and choose Duplicate Layer and just click OK. So that makes a copy of this layer immediately on top of the previous one. And now I'm going to rotate it with Edit, Transform, and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. And now I'm going to do the same thing twice more. And I can do that by holding down the Control, Alt and Shift keys and pressing the letter T. And I'll do that twice. In each case this layer has been duplicated and then rotated. 
So I've got four copies of it, each at a different rotation. And they're layered on top of each other. Right now I'm just seeing the topmost layer, but I can blend these together. So I'm going to click on the first and shift click on the third because I want to change the blend modes of these three to blend them into the one underneath a little differently. I'm going to select Dissolve. And then I'm going to run down the blend modes. You can see that Darken has given us an interesting effect and it's not obvious where that seam was. So that's certainly one that we might look at. Multiply. This is Color Burn, a very interesting effect, very different. Linear Burn. Darker Color. Lighten. Screen. Color Dodge. Linear Dodge. Lighter Color. Overlay. Soft Light. Hard Light. Vivid Light. Linear Light. Pin Light. Hard Mix. Difference, that's a really interesting effect, the Difference one. Exclusion, Subtract, Divide, Hue, Saturation, Color, and Luminance. Well, I'm going back now to the darkened ones because I really like that effect. So I'm looking at darker color as being one that I would like. So I'm just going to click on the topmost layer and press Control alt shift e to merge this to a single layer because I want to save this particular version. But you know, I also liked a different version, so I really like the Difference one. So I'm going to select these three layers again and change the Blend Mode. And I think, yes, it was Difference that I really liked. So because I like that, I'm going to click on this layer again, add a new layer this time, and press Control alt shift e so I can save that to this layer. So what I've done is taken a less than satisfactory starburst, copied it three times and rotated it each time 90 degrees, and then blended these three topmost versions of it into the bottommost version. And I've done that in different ways. And I've looked for something that I really like. And having found it, I've flattened that to a single new layer by pressing Control, Alt, Shift, and E. Now, one of the things that I did in the examples that I showed you was I applied a gradient map to some of these effects. So I think this is one that I'd like to apply a gradient map to. With the layer selected, I'm going to choose Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Gradient Map, and click OK. Now, there are a lot of different gradient maps that are shipped with Photoshop. And in earlier versions, they were pretty colorful. But in the most recent versions of Photoshop, there's some photographic options. You get to them by clicking here and choose Photographic Toning. And these are the photographic tones. And when I click on these, they're immediately applied to the illustration or the starburst that I've created here. And the way that they're being applied is that these colors here are being applied to the lightest colors in the image, and these colors here are being applied to the darkest colors in the image. But these can be edited. So for example, you could take one of these lighter colors and move it a bit further across, and take one of the darker ones and invert it. So you're actually coming to a sort of inverted effect in the middle of this image. So you can either apply a gradient that you've got here or start fiddling with the gradient to get different effects with it. So I'm just going to click OK and close this down. But I encourage you to have a look at things that you can do, particularly with this gradient map adjustment layer. With this one here, again, we could apply a gradient map adjustment layer to it. But it's also possible to apply a filter to it. So right now I'm going to convert it for Smart Filters because that's going to make it just a little bit easier for me to apply and change filters with it. So I'm going to click on the layer and choose Filter, and I'm going for the Filter Gallery. So I'm just going to get rid of some of the effects that I've already got here. Just delete this one. And this is what the Photocopy Filter would give us. Well, you'll also find that glowing edges gives some interesting results. Let's increase the edge width and look at edge brightness and perhaps also smoothness. 
And you can probably see that this is very similar to an effect that I showed you earlier, which was done using glowing edges. Let's just click OK on that. And again, we could apply a gradient map to this. Let's do Layer, New Adjustment Layer, Gradient Map. These photographic gradients are going to apply interesting effects to the shape that we've created. So you could use any of these to recolor your artwork. I'll just close that down for now. Let's go and turn this off. Let's go back to our filters. Now in addition to the filters that are available through the filter gallery, there are also filters that are available from the filter menu. I'll choose Filter and then Distort and let's have a look at Twirl. Twirl is a filter that will twirl the shape around and the larger the amount, the more the twirl effect we're going to get. I'll click OK. And this is the twirl effect that you can achieve. And again, if we apply the gradient map to it, we can get some interesting colored effects. I'm just going to discard the Smart Filter and let's go and apply one of these other filters to this shape. I'm going to choose Filter Distort and there are some others we could use here including Pinch and Sphere Eyes. Let's go and see what Sphere Eyes is going to do. Well this is going to blow the middle out of the shape so let's just click OK and you can see that it's had an effect but perhaps nothing that we would particularly want. Let's just undo it and let's see what Pinch will do. Again, Filter, Distort, Pinch. This is going to pucker the insides of the shape, so let's just go for a fairly large Pinch amount and see what that does. Well, it's just really bringing the insides in and just giving us a little bit more definition in the darks and lights in the starburst. So you may or may not be interested in that effect. Let's go back for one more trip to the Filter dialog, again into Distort, and let's have a look at Glass. The Glass Blocks effect allows you to create the, the look of light coming through a series of glass blocks. And it really is quite an interesting effect. And having created that, let's just put our gradient map back over the top. You can see that that's an interesting result. So I encourage you to experiment with the basic effect, which is done by creating a brand new layer in the image. Let's just go and put a new layer in. Go and get the gradient tool and drag down to create a gradient. Then use the Wave Filter with Filter Distort Wave to create some sort of basic design that you're then going to use to rotate around using the Polar Coordinates Filter. Click OK. And then rotate using your Polar Coordinates using Filter Distort Polar Coordinates rectangular to polar and click OK. From here you can either settle for the shape that you've got or you can start working with it to create other effects. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.